Welcome back, you're watching the Tech and Auto Show and I'm your host Manav Sinha. Now, as we promised before going for the short commercial break, it's time to talk about electric planes. Yes, turns out as is the future of automobiles called as electric, the future of aviation is also expected to be electric. And Rolls-Royce is working on a plane that's supposed to be the fastest electric plane in the world. Well, more details on that up next. Hello everyone, setting aside our usual conversations around electric vehicles, we'll today talk about electric planes and I have with me a very special guest who is leading a team at Rolls Royce to make the world's fastest all electric aircraft. Matthew Parr, welcome and thanks for talking to News 18. No, thank you for having me. Can you tell me more about this electric plane and its specifications? Yes, yeah, so, so Rolls Royce is leading a fantastic charge to build the world's fastest electric aircraft. So this is a really uh, unique opportunity where we're taking together state-of-the-art technology, building it into an aircraft, and then going to do something we hope is really inspiring, break, uh, breaking a world speed record. Yeah. So the, the aircraft itself uh, has 500 horsepower power plant up at the front. We've got more than 6,000 batteries in, 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 our, in our high energy density battery pack. And we've integrated all of that, as I say, into an aircraft to allow us to go, go break the record and go, go faster than 300 miles an hour. So we've, we've all seen in the automotive space what electric vehicles can do. In, in, in aerospace, we've now got the same trend, the same trend towards electrification. We wanted in this project to show, hopefully, in a way that's really engaging, where that disruptive technology is and what it can enable. Uh, what was the rational idea behind such an initiative? So for Rolls-Royce, sustainability and sustainable aviation is key as we look forward. And we really, we do that in three ways. We, we continue, of course, to invest in the jet engine, as you would expect. We invest in sustainable aviation fuel that we work together with partners. And we're investing in disruptive technologies like electrification to, to really try and, and push, push as far as we can towards our own goals of reaching net zero sustainable aviation by 2050. So this is a really critical project for us to demonstrate our commitment, but also show um, the world that this this is real, this is happening and, and possible. Now it's going to take us some time to go from, from the sort of prototype technology that we have today in our, in our all electric racing plane to the final sort of air taxis. So we, we see this around 2025. You know, you'll, you'll be absolutely possible to go get in an air taxi and start start to fly around uh, cities today. And when we think about just sort of increased congestion that we all have in cities today, we think these are really great opportunities just to start to reduce that and, and give people alternative routes to travel and ways to travel. Unlike ground transportation, electric propulsion systems in aviation industry are taking some time to develop. What challenges are you facing? The big challenges, I, th I think everyone is aware, of course, in, in electric aviation is, is mainly around the is around the batteries, it's around the energy density. But what we found through this activity is there are specific points where this, this technology is ready to be used, that it's viable. And in particular, you think about the urban air mobility platforms, so these air taxis taking off from the top of one building, landing on another, mm -hmm. as well as um, small trainer aircrafts. So if you want to learn how to fly, you could learn how to fly in an electric plane today. This electrification of aerospace is really disruptive, and we're seeing lots of new entrants into, into the market, and in particular, absolutely a lot of new um, aircraft concepts as well, like these urban air mobility air taxis. Yes. So these are a whole new segment that, you know, we go back 10 years ago, we were dreaming about, but we, nobody was really making. Today, there are an awful lot of companies and some really, really credible companies bringing these solutions to market. What's the commercial viability of such a project? So when you look at the markets and where these planes are going to be used, you're really going back to kind of the mega trends of, increased uh, urbanization so people moving into towns and cities and as we see more of that then the viability of these these new aircraft platforms just increases so you know this is an opportunity to have zero emission flight this is a way of taking emissions out out of the local the local town or the city where you're flying and, and enable you to move around in areas that are becoming increasingly more congested so if you if you want to take off from 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 one high-rise building and, and land land on another in, in the same city, you can do that all electric today. 
and, and that's what a lot of companies are working on bringing that technology forwards. If you want to go a little bit further, if you want to travel 200 miles and you want to do it at 150 miles an hour, then you're more moving into hybrid systems where we take sort of the core gas turbine technology, combine it with a battery and deliver a solution that way. And at Rolls-Royce, we're working on, on, on the full portfolio across that. Thank you for talking to me, Jitin. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. And with that, we've come to the end of this edition of the Tech & Auto Show. How do you find the show? Tell us by reaching out to us on Twitter. If it's about technology, reach out to us at News18Tech. If it's about automobiles, tweet out to us at News18Auto. And remember, by logging on to News18.com, you can read up more on both these industries as well as the Lexus RCF. That's about all for today. I'll catch you same time next week, only on CNN News18.